you're listening to the Two Extreme for Mainstream podcast here on YouTube, your number one place for fucked up films. Yep, it's another doom and gloom day here in the land of Newcastle and here's a trip down memory lane. Do you remember a Serbian film? Well, let me tell you, that's one of my favourite fucked up films. If you've seen it, you'll either agree with me or you'll think I'm just fucked up in the head. Either way, that's the movie I'm talking about as my first introduction to the YouTube space. Hey, hey, sickos, and welcome, welcome. I'm your host, Century Stowers. If you've liked fucked up films for quite a while, or you've just gotten into them, you're into horror movies, BDSM, you're in the right place. Now, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Sensory. I know you caught that one, clearly, already. I've done extreme cinema movies reviews for quite some time now. Along my journey, I've been fortunate enough to interview the likes of Scott Philip Gergens, Stephen Byro, Marcus Cook, Jimmy Screamer Claus, Miss Socks from I Cut Your Flesh, Coda from Love Dump, and then started my own podcast on Spotify. Now, don't worry, sicko, Spotify will stay for now unless YouTube becomes a favourite of one or all of you from you know, now till the next couple of weeks. We'll have to see how it goes. But the reason I chose YouTube is because everyone has YouTube now. I can do live videos and talk one-on-one with you all. And not to mention, all the proceeds from this channel will be going towards my Extreme Cinema Festival, a festival I want to happen in the future, but I can't do any of that on Spotify, can I? That's the beauty of YouTube. But now, back to a Serbian film. The reason I want to start with a Serbian film is not only for the reason that I mentioned before, the fact that I love the soul out of this film, but I was on TikTok and yes, I'm on there now, and this guy expressed his love for the film, goes by a bookworm of the damned, check him out on TikTok. So, I duetted the guy as you do these days, but I really feel like there's just more to talk about, you know, on another level, more than I could do on TikTok. But yet another reason I'm talking about it is because a work colleague of mine wanted it, uh, well, watched it for the first time two days ago. So I thought there must still be people out there that haven't seen it. Now, Let's not kid ourselves here, okay? You've either seen it or you've heard of it. There's no getting past it. Now, a Serbian film was banned in Spain. It was temporarily banned in Brazil. It was banned in South Australia, then later fully banned. It was banned in New Zealand also. So now you're gathering a sense of the reception. What's some of the reasons behind the ban? I wonder. Well, I'm going to tell you. In Spain, because of the threatening sexual freedom, the film was shown at the adults-only screening, but due to this, the festival's director was charged with exhibiting child pornography by the Spanish prosecutor, who decided to take action after receiving a complaint from a Roman Catholic organisation over a pair of scenes involving the rapes of a young child and a newborn. The charges were later dropped. Now for Brazil. Well, a Serbian film was removed from a bunch of film festivals for reasons which were the same as the Spanish reasons. On top of that, the Brazilian law, I'm going to call it, wanted it stopped due to causing harm to the public, for example, pedophilia. Now, let's just take a moment right here. When you compare a Serbian film to other extreme cinema in today's world, it wouldn't, in my opinion, warrant a ban. However, back in 2010, The movies were extreme, but not as extreme as today. It's just like the movie The Exorcist, for example. People back in the 70s, or 73 to be exact, were scared of this movie and it made people faint, be sick, lack of sleep. So a Serbian film had almost the same reception. So what am I trying to say is, well, our movies today won't be extreme in, say, the next 20 years. But... Now back to the ban and reasons. For Australia, they banned it because a Serbian film could not be accommodated within the R18+, so rating of 18+, classification as the level of depictions of sexual violence, themes of incest and the depiction of child sexual abuse in the film has an impact 
which is very high and not justified with context. New Zealand, however, went straight aboard with this and they straight out banned it from the get-go. The movie by New Zealand Office of Film and Literature Classification. But South Korea gave a Serbian film a limited screen and however an edit was to be made. The first edit was submitted with a duration of 94 minutes but was rejected due to extreme violence. The second edit was a duration of 88 minutes and there was relabeled as the director's edition and was again submitted. However, the same restriction for extreme violence was issued. Well, are you getting a better picture? So what is the Serbian film all about? Well, let me tell you. So the film a Serbian film is centered around Milos, a retired porn star, his beautiful wife and their son. The dynamic which you see Milos, his wife and the son is an amazing introductory to this movie. You grow a love for these characters and what I love most about the dynamic is you or anyone could relate to them. You have Milos who's struggling to bring in the money, to bring food on the table. His wife is a stay-at-home mum and their son is just like a normal next door kid who loves to play piano. Now, now sickos, before I go into any detail, I will spare you the gory details, as this movie is truly amazing and you need to watch it. End of. You need to buy it. Go and buy it now. But, now because Milos is struggling to bring the money and bring food on the table and help his wife and his son pay for the piano lessons, he gets offered a pawn role that will set him for life. Of course he thinks about it and he prepares for the roles ahead. Now again, any man would relate to this. If they can't find a job, they will take absolutely anything if it meant bringing the money in and putting food on the table for his family. So after he meets with the director, he signs the contract and filming begins. What he didn't realise, he didn't read the small print. He was bribed into a snuff film. Or snuff films. But what's a snuff film, you might ask? Well, a snuff film is a pornography film that shows an actual murder of one of the performers as an act at the end of a sadistic act. Now, that's all in the BDSM thing, and um, yeah, nobody allows snuff films, but they're all fake, but whatever. Lucifer Valentine, for a reference. Anyway, now what I love about this part of him getting bribed into snuff is... There is many occasions in which innocent people get taken advantage of and a lot more women and men need to become more educated in the porn industry. Or any industry where you are physically exposing yourself essentially. A lot of things happen during this movie, one scene you think it couldn't get any more violent but it does, let's be honest. So this movie has a build up to the biggest moment of the movie which happens at the end. So near the ending of this movie, there is a sequence of events revolving Milos in a camcorder, which again, for me, was brilliantly done. This is when Milos's wife and his son become involved. However, I'm not spilling the tea on that. But what I will say is the ending involving Milos's wife and their son, you can feel your heart breaking for them. And let me tell you, this will stick with you for the rest of your life. And I would be lying if I said I didn't share some tears the first time I ever seen this film at the end. But overall, I love this movie wholeheartedly for the relationships between Milos, his wife and the son, the money issues, the opening your eyes about the dangers of the porn industry, the gore, the violence as an extreme, the build-up, you name it. Well... That's all from me. Again, I'm Century Stowers and you've been listening to the Two Extreme for Mainstream podcast here on YouTube. Please don't forget to subscribe for more fucked up content. It's free to do so, so why not? It's a win-win. Don't also forget to check out the description for more information. Don't forget to check out some of my other podcasts on Spotify. I'll put all the links down below. But until next time, sickos, see ya.